All right, you're welcome back. Um, we're going to be talking uh, future leaders, emerging leaders. And um, on the 30th of May in 2017 here in Lagos, the Future Project will partner the National Endowment for Democracy and Wineager.com to host the third edition of the Nigeria Symposium for Young and Emerging Leaders. I have here with me Rukiba Olaniye here to talk about that. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. For having me. Okay, this is the third edition, um, and I think the theme this year is open governance, improving transparency and accountability, and accountability in government. government. Um, before we get into the the meat of, of the of the issue, um, I want to talk about this whole the idea of you know trying to work on, on open governments and you know making government better. The one thing I know we don't like in Nigeria is symposium or symposia, mm -hmm. and you know on conferences and seminars okay. we we'll talk a lot. How different is this from anything else? Okay, um, just by the by understanding the um, organizations that have come together to yeah. arrange this symposium, this is the third one, as she said. Um, we've been working for years to ensure that young Nigerians, young Africans are um, very active in government, um, are active citizens, and um, it's an ongoing conversation. It's not just a one-time symposium. We've been talking about this for a very long time, and anyone who has followed what we've done over the years would understand that it's not just a one-day symposium, come and understand everything you need to know. It's, a, it's an ongoing conversation we've been having, it, and we're not going to stop after um, Tuesday's symposium. Yeah. I talk about that because, I mean, we were talking about it in the last segment before you came on, about the primaries that held yesterday in Lagos State, the APC. I mean, I'm not trying to get you to go partisan or anything, but it's something we've seen across board with the PDP, with the APC, mm -hmm. with, with all these parties. It always seems like, you know, we try to fix things and almost immediately we go back to zero, you know. Do you think these people listen? Like you said, the, the, the thing is, half the time we talk about, we try to deal with the simple the symptoms, the, the effects, we don't go to the structural problems that we actually have and that's, that's the main issue really. We talk about um, open government, we talk about um, young people not being too young to rule, but we never actually address the issues of corruption, the issues of um, not understanding or lack of knowledge about the basic facts and the, um, um, what it takes to actually lead and all of that. We don't address the, the, the root causes, we address the symptoms of the problem. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about some of the things that uh, hopefully will be coming out of this conference. Okay. And I want to talk about, you know, this, the hashtag, never too young to run. Not too young to Not run. Not too young to run, sorry. Um, has been floating around social media for a while now. Young people are, you know, it's our turn. Give us space. Let's, let's take over things. And um, Emmanuel Macron, of course, in, in France, has made everybody suddenly, oh, he's 39. That it means can happen. Can, <laughs> it can happen here. I mean, I don't know that he would have passed the primaries here. <laughs> knowing how primaries here work. But I mean, let's talk about some of the obstacles for young okay. people going into active or partisan politics. Politics here in Nigeria. I want to start with this whole form buying thing. You know, okay. you have people trying to go for positions, and forms are going for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 yeah. million naira. I mean, even the president couldn't afford his own. <laughs> Imagine a young, a young, a young trying uh, to run. Yeah, so let's talk about that first of all. Is this something that you think can be taken away? Would there be exemptions for like young people? Okay, come and take the form for free. Because I think women in some, some parties actually give women the forms for, forms free, for free for, for, for s s certain positions. Okay, so, yes, it is a problem, but that's one of the it's one of the things that um the hashtag not too young to rule is actually a bill before the national assembly right now it's one of the um things that have been proposed to change reducing the um, um ages that's number one and also ensuring that um, independent candidates can run that yeah. way you remove the obstacle of form buying and all of that you, en you you ensure that anyone who's actually capable and interested in running can actually run if you want to run on and you've talked about emmanuel macron he didn't have to he only started his amash uh, movement and then um, that that, that um, graduated into some sort of political party, but he was essentially an independent candidate, and that's an important factor if you want to open the doors wider for young people and anyone who's really interested. And how's the National Assembly responding to that? You think? Did <laughs> <laughs> you just side it either? <laughs> <laughs> it took those 17 years to get to the um, um, petroleum industry bill. We'll see how long how this long? will take. But we hope, because there's an ongoing conversation that there are people who are more interested and canvassing for this to happen. So it, I'm sure it won't take that long. Yeah. It's hard to put a time, what's it called, to it. But 
I'm sure do, we'll do, you get, do, you, do you think it's an exciting thing or do you get offended sometimes? Because it looks like a lot of young people who get into government these days, most of them are by appointment. I mean, okay. you have one or two who get mm -hmm. to win elections in mm -hmm. very scattered locations. Mm -hmm. um, but the majority of people who get in are appointed. And usually the special assistant or senior special advisor or one of those positions, most times on social media, you know, things <laughs> along those lines. Does it excite you? I mean, it, it, people say, okay, it's a good thing at least we have one foot in mm -hmm. or one toe in or whatever it is. Whatever. But okay. people are like, but I mean, what does that do for anybody really? Um, it does something. Let, let's, it's, it's something that you have opened the door for you to get a foot, a toe, a fingernail in. It's something. But the question we should be asking is how competent are even these young people who have managed to push their way in, how competent have they been in their roles? How competent are they? Can they actually um, um, pick up the mantle and run for offices? Um, the young ones, the young ones that we've had in the past and the young ones that we have right now, not to name names, what are they doing and all of that? So we can sit here and criticize the fact that these are the positions that are open for um, young people right now but the thing is how ready are the young people that yeah. we actually have right now yeah I, I, I was you, have, you actually led me to the next question okay. I was going to ask because people have talked about oh it's it's very hard to not join them because we actually cannot beat them especially with with the fact that you go into government the majority there are not young people these are people who have been establishment politicians who are career politicians. politicians they've been there for 20 30 40 years sometimes and they know how to manipulate and run mm -hmm. these things so you go in there you are a, an activist you're a person of the people things. you're going to change things as a young person when you go there and then this guy goes into government he's 31 32 brimming with so much energy and he just goes quiet and he comes out and he gives excuses and that's one more person lost you know um what are we doing wrong? What are we, are we not, why does it seem like we don't not seem to have, I mean, this is not generalizing, of course, but it looks like that seems to be the pattern. There doesn't seem to be enough soul, enough bite, you know, to fight the establishment. You know, I said earlier that we focus on the symptoms and not the problem itself. So we've, we've spent so much time talking about we don't have young people in government such that the young people who get into government, we don't screen them well enough. We just do the woo-woo thing and then you get someone who's young, he's young. So the conversation should not be just about how young the person is, but also how competent so the person is. So how do we do that? Is. How do we realistically you know, do really, that? It's a democratic um, 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 dispensation, but the most important thing is for you to have an active citizenry, have an um, 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 a citizenry that questions, that actually understands. The, the problem of lack of knowledge is what leads us to getting ready for the elections one year before, such that we don't even know the pedigree of the candidates that are running and all of that. We need to start asking questions the moment someone is a social media um, director or someone is, a, someone is active on Twitter or anything we need to start asking questions of them what do you really know what do you know about the policies what, what what are the policies you want to change what ideologies are you bringing what new things do you want to bring into government when you get there because obviously you're not just talking about it you're not just being a political analyst for being a political analyst sake if um if it the the um, button is passed to you what are you going to do differently yeah. and all of that we, we don't we shouldn't wait till when they declare their intention to run before we start taking interest as a people, we need to get interested too. Yeah. We need to get knowledgeable about this thing.